Well, this is a special preview video of the AC500. This is from Bluetti, and this is the B300S battery. So I'm gonna be reviewing and doing some testing in this video. I'll have more videos on this. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of reviewing and testing in this video to see what the system can and can't do. Honestly, I don't know if there's anything it can't do right now except for 240 volts because I don't have my second unit here. But I wanna see what it can do and bring you along with me to see if this is a system that you may be interested in. So stick around for this full review of the Blue Eddy AC500 along with the B300S battery. This is gonna be pretty interesting. This is a pretty amazing system because it has a 5,000 watt pure sine wave inverter in it. The B300S battery is just over 3,000 watt hours. But this battery right here even has its own 500 watt solar input that can be used in addition to the charge controllers that are built into the top unit. Now the top unit does not have a battery in it. You must have one B300S or B300 battery to operate with this, and it's recommended to use the B300S batteries. Now they got the same screen that they've had for quite a while now, and it's a touch screen. It gives you into all the settings and all the things that uh, you'd wanna be able to see as far as data and everything. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there are some things you have to set up in the screen to make sure everything's working properly, but that's really simple to do. But one of the coolest features besides the 5,000 watt inverter is it does have an L1430R. R just stands for receptacle or receiver. And so you'd have an L1430P, which is the plug that goes into that, which is exactly this right here. And I have this connected to my interlock switch, uh, the plug for it. So that way, if I wanted to, I could run my house off of the system by plugging it straight into there. Or I've got an adapter to where I can use this RV plug. This is a TT30 plug, but they also have this NEMA 1450R plug right here, which is a 120 volt 50 amp output. That's one of the cool features is that this is the first solar generator that I've ever seen that has a 50 amp service plug on it, which you can use for your RV. So a lot of toy haulers and fifth wheelers have a 50 amp service with two air conditioners and such. You can actually use this and power the whole RV completely. It's got 3000 watts of solar input that you can put, plus the 500 you can do into here. And that's for each battery. So if you had another battery, if you had two batteries, you can get 4000 watts of solar to go into this. And you can have up to six of these batteries. So you can actually have over 18,000 watt hours of battery, which is pretty incredible on a single system. And then you can actually double the system which makes it even more powerful. So when you combine two of these together, you have a 10,000 watt inverter. You can have almost 37,000 watt hours of battery capacity between the two systems. And you have all these outputs and stuff, which is pretty incredible. So thumbs up to Bluetti for coming out with something so powerful like this. Now on the side here, we have a number of different plugs. You can obviously see the big battery cable here. I personally really dislike how unwieldy this cable is. The handle itself makes it really awkward to be able to use because it's not just the width of this that you have to count for, but this whole cable here, which sticks out another 18 inches. So as far as cable management goes, that part sucks. But let's say I had six batteries on this. I could either stack all six of them up, just straight up and down, or I could even have two stacks of three, where I have three under the main unit and three in another stack. And so battery number two would plug into this port and then go down and be into the top port of the next battery, and then so on and so on. Uh, or you can have the second stack plugged into here going off to the side and have it all split up into two different stacks. So that's pretty cool. We've got the solar input right here and it says 12 to 60 volts and up to 10 amps. So I could easily connect three 200 watt solar panels up to this. And so that would be hopefully over paneling it to actually get the 500 watts in. And then here is the wall charger adapter that goes in there. And this is capable of charging from solar and the wall at the same time. Now here we've also got more plugs. This is the AC input. And you can actually do 240 volts and 50 amps into this. If I remember correctly, it's a 5,000 watt AC charger. And then here is the solar input. It actually has two 12 to 150 volt and 15 amp charge controllers built into this and it's got its own special adapter so that way you can have two separate solar arrays for up to 3000 watts of solar input which is impressive all on its own and we're going to be testing that here hopefully real soon to see how well that does now this is a lithium iron phosphate battery and it says that this system needs to be charged up every six months in the user manual using this just as a dc power option because it does have its own 12 volt plug here as well as 100 watt USB-C here and an 18 watt USB-A right there with its own solar input and everything. So realistically, you could take this 
and use it in a van or something like that, or just on a road trip to run some basic 12 volt equipment. And you would never have to have this big unit. You could just get the battery, which is a cool feature that it basically works on its own as a standalone system. Now, as far as what comes with it, and so this is exactly what you'd use to go right into the side of the battery directly and plug it in for solar input, just like that. And just to see if that works, I've got a single 200 watt solar panel outside right now. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. So this is interesting. I'm seeing the lights flashing green here, but I'm not getting any PV input information up top here. So I'm gonna let this sit here for a little bit and see if the battery percentage goes up because we can see the charge going in there. Now there's also a cigarette lighter to MC4 adapter, and I've honestly never seen this before. That one, I honestly don't know, sorry about that. We've got the wall charging cable right here, and this is really nice because it no longer has a big power brick on it. That is now built into the system. So this right here will do 1800 watts of wall charging. To get above that, you have to have basically an EV charger to get it to charge faster from a wall outlet. And then we've got our solar connection here. So you see we have two DC connections with uh, MC4s right here, and then a single Blue Eddy connection right here, which is a four pin aviation. So pretty clever that they put it all into one. It is really nice that there are two solar inputs on this. Uh, the only other system that I'm aware of that really does that besides the AC300, which is the little brother to this, is the Titan solar generator. So it's cool to see multiple ways of getting solar connected very simply. Now, normally in my videos, I do an inverter battery discharge to see if it will actually discharge properly. But because this is such a large inverter and because this is a strong battery and the inverter is definitely much larger than the battery capacity, there's no need to do that test because we know we can for sure run 3000 watts, which is a 1C rate discharge off of this battery out of this 5,000 watt inverter. Now it does say in the user manual that if you have one battery, you're limited to 4,500 watts of output. And if you want to access the full 5,000 watts of output capacity, then you need at least two batteries. The number one way that these solar generators fail is with solar input. So that's the biggest thing I wanna test is because to really call it a solar generator, it needs to be rechargeable off of solar. Now we can obviously see that the charge is going up right here with just the single 200 watt panel connected. But I wanna go ahead and connect a bunch of solar to this just to see how well it does to see if we can actually get a really fast recharge from the solar panels. So we do know that this is reading out to that. And now I've got my solar cable right here and I've got two solar lines. So each solar line has eight 200 watt solar panels for 1600 watts on each one. And the first solar line here, I'll show you the voltage, is right at 51.4 volts. So that's actually over what this is rated for. We're gonna plug it in. And here on the second line, we're getting right at 149. So if anything catches on fire, I'm doing this for you guys. And so hopefully by now you'll consider giving a like and a subscribe because I'm doing this so that way you don't have to find out the hard way. So all I'm doing is finding the DC2 positive and DC2 negative. And then here I've got the DC1 positive and negative. You can see they're labeled there. I wanna make sure I'm getting this right. So we're gonna connect 3,200 watts of solar plus the 200 watts here. So we'll have 3,400 watts connected. So immediately the PV turns on and we're already starting to go up. We're at 863, 1100. So that's pretty cool. So we're nearly getting 1300 watts from that first string of solar. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the second string. Oh, and now we get an alarm. The alarm is over voltage. So even by 1.5 volts, we cannot go over. So well, that's really good that it caught that and it does have a protection. That way you don't just fry the system. So I'm gonna to have to disconnect one of the solar panels. So I'll have seven on that string. Uh, and then I'll connect that up. So now I'm getting 132 volts on this array. So we're at 1273 right when I added this other array. And so now we're at 2070. Um, and so if we're doing 2070 between 15 panels, we're getting 138 per panel. So we're getting about 2080 right now. What I'm gonna do is do the other array, take it down to seven solar panels and see what the solar input is then. So now I've got 14 panels total, so seven on each array. So we have 1400, so we have 2800 watts connected and we're getting 1900 and we're still getting about 135 watts per solar panel. So that's pretty low right now. Not sure why that is so low. That's actually surprisingly low because these solar panels have done very, very well for me. But whatever it's worth, 
that's what it's giving off. These solar panels, these 200 watt panels, I've actually gotten 214 watts out of them in similar conditions. It's a perfectly clear sunny day. It's mid 70s. So very, very good weather for the solar panels, but we're only getting 2000 watts in right there. So I think the way to maximize this would be to put a couple more solar panels on this. But knowing how sensitive the DC input is, I don't think I don't know if I can connect three solar panels to this with the 200 watts in order to maximize the solar input. Let's go ahead and give that a test. I've got three 200 watt solar panels connected to this. We are getting exactly 56.1 volts and this can go up to 60 volts. So we should be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and connect it up. We can only assume that this is charging from those solar panels, but now I've got 600 watts connected so we can think that maybe there's 400 to 500 watts coming in from those solar panels, in addition to the 1938 that we're getting there. So we're getting close to 2,400 watts of solar input basically uh, between this whole setup. And I maxed out on voltage. There's nothing else I can do to increase the solar input. So the reason why I wasn't working with the eight solar panels is when I first connected it, it was just over the 150 volts. And once the MPPT takes over and starts adjusting things, it lowers the voltage and raises the amperage so that way it can get a better charge. So unfortunately, there's no way to add more panels, even though there's more room in the voltage to make that work, because when I initially connect, the voltage is too high. I didn't see anything in the user manual, but I wish there was some way to be able to see the solar input going into the battery so we can get a total output here. But it's just frustrating that I can't get more solar to actually work into here. So as far as the solar input goes, it's good because the next best solar generator for solar input has been the Titan Solar Generator, that or the High Solus MPS3K, once you add the additional MPPT charge controller. But as far as this out of the box, being able to get more than 2000 watt solar input, it's clearly doing that. We just can't see the exact amount. I just plugged in this 60 volt watt meter that you can get at poweredportablesolar.com. And this is great because it can only read up to 60 volts and the max voltage input for this is 60 volts. And I'm at 56 volts for the panels. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and we're gonna see right up here we're at 56.7 volts. We're gonna give it a second and this is gonna queue on. And when I did this just a second ago, it got all the way up to 394 watts and then it just stopped running. Huh, it is not turning back on at all. So it is not getting solar input from those solar panels. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect these solar panels here, see if anything shows up on the battery solar input. Let me disconnect this and then try reconnecting it to see what's going on because this should be working. It's not showing anything at all here. So it is not charging by the solar panels. Let me disconnect the watt meter and see if it starts charging again without the watt meter connected. Okay, once again, it is showing a charge. I don't have the watt meter, so Let's connect the watt meter again. Okay, showing 56.4 volts, connect it in. And let's see if this starts flashing and if we get a charge here. Yeah, right off the bat, 30 watts and climbing. So we're at 379 watts of solar input right now. Oh, it just hit 380. So it's definitely not getting anywhere near the 500 watts, but we can see we're getting 46 volts at 8.27 amps, but the solar panels make up to 13 amps and should be able to make around 60 volts. So the charge controller in here is not utilizing all of the available power from what I'm guessing to be able to get more charge into this. So let's keep that running and then reconnect the other solar panels. We're at 381, 382 down here, 1900 up here. So call this 400 and 1900, we're getting 2300 watts of solar input. So Basically, it's not doing everything that it says it should do for the solar input because we should be getting more solar input from the other panels and more from right here. But either way, it is making more solar input than the Delta Pro can do, than the Titan can do, and uh, not as much as what the High Solus MPS3K can do if you get the additional solar panel charge controller. But this is an all-in-one unit where you don't have to buy extra equipment like that charge controller. All in all, it's charging up really well with solar. It's just not charging up as we would hope. So that's pretty typical with what we find with solar generators. 
but that's kind of a big letdown. Now I am waiting for my second AC500 unit. Uh, I purchased that one so that way I could have two of them and then I'm gonna link them up and power my entire house and I'll be able to show you exactly how I do that from beginning to end. But if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. This unit, I do like it. It's got a really, really strong inverter. I mean, the fact that it's got this 50 amp output is pretty incredible. I can connect it to my house, but in this configuration, I can only run half of my electrical panel and nothing 240 volts. So that will be in the next video of the AC500. And so I'll have this and one more battery. Uh, maybe I'll buy more batteries as well. But I want you guys to know that I'm purchasing this equipment so that way I can share it with you so that way you know exactly what it'll do. And that's what I'll do in this next video with the 240 volt connection for the whole house. So thank you so much for being here. Be prepared. One of the best ways to be prepared is to go to poweredportablesolar.com and check out the solar generator kits that are available because I only put on the website the kits that I would personally use and recommend. There are so many solar generators out there now and a lot of them will not do what you need them to do. So shoot me an email at info at poweredportablesolar.com. I'd be happy to help you figure out what size system will work best for you and all the things you want to run. But seriously, just get prepared. Have your own source of backup power. I prefer solar backup. That way I can continuously recharge because I know the sun's not running out anytime soon. And then as a backup to my solar, I use my gas and propane solar generator. So I'm not dependent on a fuel source that's really hard to get during hurricanes, floods, blackouts, or whatever. I have plenty of it here. And with enough battery capacity, I know I can continually run for a very, very long time. Population's only increasing. Grid power is only decreasing. You're going to face blackouts at some point. Pretty much everywhere is talking about them, whether it's a natural disaster or man-made turning off your power. So have some form of backup power. Thank you so much for being here. Be prepared. I will see you guys in the next video.